So welcome to my latest video. Today's task, well I say today, I've allowed myself four days just in case, is to try and swap out the automatic gearbox on my 2008 Freelander 2 TD4. So uh, I've got uh, a replacement gearbox from a breakers. I know that's taking a bit of a risk, but I've been quoted £4,000 to rebuild my gearbox. The breaker gearbox is £500, so my thought process was, well, let's give it a go, swap it over. And if I can get another couple of years out of it for that, then happy days. My current gearbox is um, slipping between gears. Uh, Took it to my local independent Land Rover guy who uh, connected it up to his uh, code reader, put it in drive, held it on the brake and uh, revved it for a little while and we came up with a gearbox clutch pack overheat error so that gave us the the final evidence that the, the clutch pack was slipping in the gearbox. So replacement gearbox, uh, I picked it up in the car, fortunately I have an engine crane so it helps to, uh, to remove that and then there's a threaded uh, hole in the top of the gearbox which actually quite neatly fits a M10 lifting eye. The lifting eye is rated to 250 kilos and I understand the gearbox is around about the 95 kilo mark having researched on the uh, on the web. It seems a bit heavier than that to me but I'm pretty comfortable that a quarter of a ton lifting eye is not going to struggle with lifting it so we load it out of there the other bits i've done so far on the car i've removed the scuttle panel and the wipers which you've seen on uh, my earlier video and various other people showing how to do that i'm just about to take out the battery tray so when you remove the battery there are four bolts to um take out from the bottom it sort of clips in under here and it clips in under here and then you can just maneuver it out uh, that gives access then to the hanger for the gearbox which sits below that battery tray obviously I've got to take out the the air filter element and the the pans pipe arrangement across the top there's then looking at the the Land Rover manual there's actually a lifting eye tucked in down the back there on the uh, edge of the engine block and the idea is that you hang the engine from that lifting eye uh, which then allows you to remove the hanger support off the gearbox. Um, I've had a piece of steel fabricated to span the width of my uh, engine bay and to bear onto the, the strut mountings and then some hanger bolts to hopefully pick up the, the lifting eye. Looks like I will have to remove the the metal panel again at the back of the engine bay because I think that's going to foul the lifting eye if it's left in place. Um, the other thing I've done at the moment is I've undone the front bolts to the prop shaft and manoeuvred that just back far enough to clear the power transfer unit at the front of the engine, or oh, sorry, front of the car, rear of the engine. So I'll take the, uh, the filter box off next and probably the rear panel behind the engine and then I'll pro bring you back at that point and we'll talk through the next stages. So this is now with the rear panel removed, the air intake, pipework removed, battery tray removed, and that then obviously gives us access then to the hanger for the gearbox, center shot there. The next stage you've got to do is remove the starter motor which is kind of tucked down under those wiring looms and uh, we need to get these wiring looms out of the way in order to get to some bolts that are holding the starter motor on and they're tucked behind these these cables and then towards the bottom of the engine where you can't really see it from here the starter motor uh, where the starter motor fits in here the loom goes down and there's a 
eight millimeter socket headed uh, nut or bolt down there which holds that loom on it's kind of center of my shot I'll probably put a surf on it uh, on the video um, and hopefully that will allow us then to pull these cables out of the way I've already detached the cable to the um, gearbox brain if you like so uh, I'll try and get that um, bolt removed and we'll see if we can get the starter motor out so I've managed to get that um, bracket off and the bolt will go through there into the block and that just gives us a little bit more wriggle room with these cables uh, in order to get to the starter motor bolts I think what I might end up doing is just sort of lifting that up trying to get a socket in underneath it's still quite hidden you can just about in there. You can see one there there's another one up in that direction one more down below see from the shot here I just about managed to get a socket in by pulling the, the wire and loom upwards and feeding it in from the right hand side to one of the nuts we'll see how we sorry bolts and then we'll uh, see how we can get to the other ones uh, this is proven to be quite difficult to get these bolts out so I've now you know, dropped the, which you have to do anyway, I'm dropping the metal intercooler hose that runs underneath the engine sump to the turbo um, in order to try and give myself a bit more access in there to uh, get these bolts out. So I'll bring you back after I've dropped that away. Well, I have to say, um, you need to take that intercooler pipe off as a first exercise, really. And then you've got bags of access then. You can see the couple of uh, bolts I've just left or reattached for the moment. The lower one holds on the um, intercooler pipe bracket. And the top one holds on the wiring loom bracket. And then you can reach up in this gap now um, in order to reach the, the starter motor bolts. So uh, the Haynes manual says not to take the intercooler pipe off till later on in the process, but definitely take it off early on. Once you've got the starter motor removed, and I found it easy, is to drop it down through the bottom of the engine. Uh, you can then see the teeth of the drive plate. And there's a cover, partial cover plate that we've got to remove, which I think is that uh, bolt in the middle of my picture there. Um, this is all to allow access to undo the fixings between the drive wheel and the torque converter. So, so I think it's that bolt you can see in the middle of my shot now. So I'll uh, undo that and see if we can get this plate off. So that's with the um, cover plate removed from the starter motor aperture you can see more of the drive plate now and then just um, beyond the uh, notched edge of the drive plate you can see I think the head of one of the bolts that holds the torque converter on um, just to the right of the piece of metal with the two holes in it I'll circle that later and that's the whole purpose of taking this light out here you have to turn the um, the flywheel using a, uh, a socket on the uh, crankshaft pulley um, in order to access those bolts one at a time and undo them to allow you to withdraw the torque converter. Showing up in there. Um, and then the, the cover plate is that bit of kit there with a single bolt holding it in place. So I think that's as much as I can do in there at the moment. Um, I think we then need to start looking at um, removing the wheels um, and uh, undoing the very
very suspended bits and pieces to allow us to drop the subframe, which is one of the fundamental steps of this process. I'm not convinced yet that I might not need to uh, drain the cooling uh, system because I could do with these cooling hoses being out of the way really because you've got to try and get these bolts done up in the flywheel aperture there and access is very tight and you've got to torque them up as well so we'll have to do that later so I think we'll get the road wheels off next and start to uh, get suspension apart so a quick update of where we're at now I've undone the anti-roll bar drop links I've undone the steering track rod ends I've undone the lower wishbone ball joint I've removed the retaining bolt at the end of the drive shaft done that on both sides I've had to then almost fully remove the bumper to loosen it off enough uh, taking these two fixings out one at the top here one in the side in order to be able to pull it far enough forward at the bottom to get this plastic trim off because that plastic trim fixes to the uh, subframe I've got to drop the subframe and I don't see how you'd be able to drop that out of there without removing it because it sort of is connected to the lower edge of the uh, of the bumper I've then uh, drained out what will come out of the sump anyway in terms of the gearbox oil um, and then spar side say the same as the other side in terms of suspension bits that have been dropped away next I need to uh, disconnect the power steering pipe work and the pinch bolt at the bottom of the uh, steering column um, and then also the stabiliser bracket that you see in the middle of my shot there for the engine that needs to come away as well and that should then leave the subframe just hanging on it some securing bolts one thing you need to do inside the car is to undo the pinch bolt for the steering column you can see there on the, in the center of the shot there that needs a uh, 10 millimeter spanner or socket to undo that and you have to replace that with a new bolt so hopefully that'll be straightforward so that's with the pinch bolt removed um, and then just be aware that there's a a recess in the shaft there so you have to actually fully withdraw the bolt to be able to move the clamp upwards on the steering knuckle and that will then slide slide up and clear the clear the shaft and just leave that there so that will allow the subframe to drop down once I've removed the other bits and pieces so I've jumped forward a few stages from when I recorded last I've had to take the um, the front bumper off that's because the subframe has a, a bracket that comes through the main hanging bolt and leaps forward and goes through the, uh, the bracket there. Um, and you couldn't just drop that vertically down without fouling the, the bumper. So that's the, uh, that's the bracket. Um, so what I've done is I've got the back of the subframe supported on my trolley jack I've actually had a section of steel plate made up that bolts to the top of my trolley jack to make sure everything's nice and secure and then the front's on timbers so basically it's a sort of stage process of holding the front end up with the arm, just dropping down each section of timber and then lowering the trolley jack to suit. And then I'm hoping I can withdraw that, drag that forward and out the front of the car. Um, there are two big bolts and two smaller bolts at the back. You need to mark the location of everything fairly carefully because I try and get the alignment right once you put it all back together. Um, and then the other bugbear which I was kind of expecting um, still 
to, to be a problem with the power steering pipe work. So I couldn't get the um, the fixing out of the steering rack. The uh, Torx head is rounded. I couldn't get the pipes out of the uh, the push fit connections apart from the one where you bend the little tabs back or pry the little tabs back. So I've ended up cutting one off. Annoyingly, I'd bought the bottom pipe, knowing that I wanted to save myself time and knew that would be a pain. But I haven't bought the upper two yet, so I'm going to need to uh, add those to my order, unfortunately, and replace those. But they don't think they're the best of condition, so that's probably not a bad idea anyway. Um, so yeah, that's this the other side, the driver's side of the of the subframe. There's a couple of um, fuel pipes that you need to unclip from the subframe here to allow it to drop. Um, these are the these are the fuel pipes running forward. Um, and then there's a there's a mounting for the uh, the exhaust. You need to drop this rubber bush to allow that to come away. And then uh, we've nearly got that clear. And I decided I'd do that before taking the drive shafts out because I'm trying to lever the, the wishbone arm down far enough to get out the hubs are right nightmare so I thought well if I drop the subframe that will make my life easier hopefully I won't regret that uh, we'll see how we go once I've got the sub subframe out so what I found I needed to do was actually take the two drive shafts out next once I'd lowered the subframe enough that the wishbones dropped out the bottom of the hubs made life fairly easy but I then had a problem with the uh, steering column linkage um, I can't lower my trolley deck far enough to get this under the sump so I needed to bring it out a bit towards this wheel arch driver side wheel arch and then uh, obviously as you can see there that's where the the drive shaft would have come through so I've seen it to take that out of the way in order to be able to move that past so I'm gonna drag the subframe out now and then uh, I think the next thing to do is take the power transfer unit off. So here we are now with the subframe removed. I've placed it on a homemade little gurney stroke trolley so I can uh, wheel it around a little bit easier. I need to replace the ball joint rubbers. Unfortunately they've got a bit trash trying to get the ball joints apart, which is what I feared. Um, and I need to sort the uh, the power steering pipes, which you know, looking at that, doesn't look too um, look too clever in there. So, that's that. so in terms of the car itself, we have drive shafts removed. I've actually removed the shock absorber on this side, mainly because with my equipment, I'm going to have to bring the gearbox out and under the wheel arch rather than out the front of the car because I can't get it low enough which is kind of where I expected I'd be going. So I've got a steel plate made up. I'm going to ratchet strap that over the gearbox and then I'm going to stabilize it as I lower it with my engine crane, um, which I'm going to attach the old lifting eye down there. This is the, oops, that's the um, M10 threaded hole. So I'll have the lifting crane, engine crane above here to stabilize it. Obviously before all of that we've got to support the engine before we can take the gearbox bracket off. For this I've had a piece of PFC channel fabricated up. I've just got to trim the uh, the end a little bit because I want to be able to shut the and get the uh, the bonnet closed as far as I can and it's fouling on the strut at the moment so I'm going to just a nick a bit off the end of there. And then um, I've got a shackle lifting eye M12 grade 8.8 .8 bolt heavy washer. Might put a couple on there because the slot's quite big on the safe side. I've got three of those, in fact, the washers, so stiffen that up. It's important to being a structural engineer. Um, and then it bears onto the, um, the strut mountings. And it actually aligns very well, actually. Quite pleased with that. Uh, it does say in the Haynes manual to hang the engine from an engine crane, but I've only got one crane and I'll need that elsewhere. And I wasn't keen about leaving it hung from. An engine crane for any period anyway 
Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to modify the PFC, cut that bolt down, obviously it's too long at the moment, and then uh, we're kind of ready then to think about the removing the power transfer unit and the gearbox. So in terms of the power transfer unit removal, we're going to take this bracket off first, um, which is on the driver side of the vehicle. There are eight bolts that hold that on uh, to the power transfer unit and the uh, engine block. Uh, they look like a 13 mil socket will do most of those. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to need to take the turbo hose off here just because there's a bolt up behind it at the top there which might be a little bit awkward to get to um, so we'll uh, have a go at that and bring you back once I've uh, dropped that away so that's with that support bracket removed relatively straightforward the bolts weren't particularly tight a couple of them are studs with nuts on uh, the one at the top here um, which also uh, holds a sort of uh, loop that um, holds the drive shaft into the bracket that's a stud and then one of these here is a stud with a nut it's very light so it feels like, like an aluminium forging or something not really heavy at all so with that removed we and we didn't need, i didn't need to take this pipe off there was enough room i got a socket in from uh, above this pipe um that reached in okay um, and then now it's time for transfer unit removal so I'm going to support that on my trolley jack and probably strap it to it and then we've got a series of bolts to remove between it and the uh, the gearbox and that should then just withdraw um, towards the drive side of the car we'll see how that goes so this is now with the power transfer unit removed there is a breather pipe to detach from the top and then seven bolts around the perimeter uh, which are a 13 mil socket supported the power transfer unit on my trolley jack and then slid it away from the, uh, the gearbox and then lowered it down so not too bad a process um, so now I just need to look at uh, detaching uh, the pipes, earthing strap and the uh, gear control linkage from the gearbox and then we might be getting a bit closer to uh, thinking about detaching the hanger from the gearbox and lowering it away. So in terms of the gear selector uh, removal, you have to prise the black end here up off of the ball joint on the selector arm. Then there's a white collar here that you have to prise forward with a screwdriver and that allows you then to lift this up out of its retaining bracket. There's a uh, breather pipe which uh, is attached to the, uh, the lower section of the uh, gearbox hanger mount. I think I might get away with leaving it on at the minute because it's, it's still on on the old gearbox or sorry on the new gearbox uh, but there is then uh, once we get this out of the way there is a earthing cable that we've got to undo which uh, comes onto the side here but bolts onto the bracket somewhere under there we can't get to that until we've got the top section off so I'm just going to make sure that everything's uh, nicely supported before I start thinking about taking that bracket off um, and then we'll bring you back at that point so this is looking into the starter motor aperture. You can see the drive plate there. Um, and then just below that you'll see a, uh, well it's not a Torx head. I'll tell you what it is later when I look it up. But uh, that's the, uh, one of the bolts that holds the torque converter on. So you have to spin the, uh, the engine round using the uh, socket on the uh, crankshaft pulley to get those aligned with the, uh, the recess there and then you get a socket in to undo those. Uh, there are six around the perimeter of the flywheel and the torque converter you can just see in the background there beyond the serrated edge of the, uh, of the flywheel. So this is looking up from below basically so um, down below. 
load in front of the car. So the torque converter bolts that you see around the perimeter of the replacement box um, take an M12 star headed multi pronged uh, socket. Just so you know. And you need to replace the torque converter bolts with new ones, they've got obviously a lot tight type product on the threads. So the next steps, according to the Haynes manual, um, once you've got the torque converter uh, bolts removed, is to take a couple of bolts out on the top of the gearbox, one there you can see my socket on, and then one is towards the back, just sort of above that yellow label that we can see in the distance there. So I'm just trying to uh, get those undone, you have to sort of pull the wire and glue out of the way a bit. So that other bolt's proving to be difficult to get to from above because of the thermostat and the pipe work. It's kind of in the centre of my shot there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, unclip the uh, the breather that was to the top of the power transfer unit and hopefully I can get a socket in from below here to get that one in the distance there. Uh, this breather just unclips, there's a clip at the top, it's there, and another one on the transfer case just down here. So I'll pop those off next and then I think I can get in from down below as well. So if that rear bolt that you can now see, uh, kind of in the middle of my shot, uh, almost fully withdrawn there, I found that I could get a ratchet headed ring spanner on that from below. That's about the only way you can get a socket on it, because the gearbox casing got in the way. But yeah, rinse when I'll do the trick on that one. So having got my uh, shackle and engine crane connected up, at the moment the engine supported both on the steelwork at the back through the lifting eye and uh, the gearbox at the moment also supported by the engine crane um, and I've also got my trolley jack underneath so hopefully bolt and braces. I've therefore uh, now undone the, the nuts, two big nuts on here, 18 mil um, socket required, and a couple of 10 mil socket um, little bolts in there. And then once you've done that, you can angle this up and drag it out. And that sort of reveals the, the primary hanger underneath. And then the uh, next stage, now that you've got that off, is to undo the two bolts that you can see uh, in my image now and that then uh, means the gearbox is no longer hung from the car bodywork so we'll see how that goes so once you've gained access to these two uh, bolts inside you can remove those I have to warn you I have to use a impact driver to get those out They're quite tight um, I've marked where this sits as well because interestingly the, the bolts here are very tight up against the uh, edges on this. So I want to make sure I get it back in the same place. And then it should be able to just lift that if you want to lift that out. It's fouling on that um, plastic at the back there. So maybe I'll leave that where it is then shouldn't get in the way I don't think I do recommend you then take the um, the lower support off as well which I think I probably will do just because it's going to make it life easier getting it underneath the uh, the wheel arch so I think there are four bolts on there the one at the back might be tricky unless it's I think it's combined with that. Oh, maybe it's only three. This one tucked away somewhere. Let me try getting those off and I'll uh, let you know what I find. So again, I need the impact driver to get those bolts out of the lower mounting. And the one down the bottom there, where the earthing strap went on, 
That was also very tight, but you need a deep socket to be able to get on that. I tried to do it with a spanner from below, but you can't get enough leverage. You still need the impact driver. So um, fortunately I had a deep socket that would reach over the stud down to the uh, nut there and withdraw that. So they're all loose now, so I'll rip that off. Um, now it's just, I've only really done that, so I think I need space to be able to drag the engine away, uh, sorry, the gearbox away from the engine. And I think that's just gonna buy me a bit more space really. So that's with that lower support now removed. So I have to unclip this breather. Uh, there's a metal spiky clip on the uh, side there. Just get a screwdriver underneath it and prise that off. And um, that's the mounting bracket. I'm just thinking that's gonna give me much more play in terms of sliding the gearbox away from the engine. Uh, see the earth strap down below there, just hanging loose. All the electrics are disconnected. So we should be good to go now with unbolting and drawing it apart. Um, other than, just to make sure I unplug the couple of um, uh, oil feeds from the cooler, cover those over so they don't get contaminated. So I'll bring it back once I've done that. So with the uh, two oil feeder pipes removed and then covered over with some gloves just to make sure they don't get any contamination in there, we've then got four bolts under on the bottom. You can see in my shop, one at the back, one in the middle here, one here and then one up here just below the starter motor housing and then there's two more at the back and then that should be the gearbox three and then we've got to try and maneuver it away from the engine so the other two bolts to remove are on the back of the engine block one at the top here and one at the bottom um, i've left one of the other bolts on the far side in finger tight at the moment just on the safe side um, so I've got these away and uh, see where we go from there. So this is now with the gearbox clear of the engine. Just have to get the, uh, the uh, torque converter and nudge with a screwdriver through the aperture there just to make sure because it, it has to come away with the transmission and not get left behind on the, on the engine. So uh, I think we're at the point now where we can start a phased lowering process. So bring it back after that. I've got some more timbers underneath at the moment, just to be on the safe side. So I've carried out a staged process, lowering it a little bit on the jack, lowering it a little bit on the engine crane. Slowly, 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 a fraction at a time. We've managed to drop it down now nicely clear of the uh, engine the torque converter stayed in the gearbox which is good um, and then the image from inside the wheel arch I'm very very glad that I took the uh, shock absorber strut out it's made my life so much easier so I would recommend that if you do want to attempt this at home so uh, just need to swap the shackle over now so I can re-support it underneath the wheel arch and then uh, withdraw it out and uh, we've made some decent progress. I'll bring you back a bit later. So having got the old gearbox out, the uh, one thing I do want to do is uh, replace the crankshaft or wall seal because I think that's been leaking ever since I've had the car. So I need to remove the eight bolts there take the flywheel off and then uh, see how we get the, uh, the old and new seals swapped over. I'll bring it back once I've got the flywheel off. So I faffed around with a socket for a little while and it was too much like hard work so I've uh, used an impact driver to remove the bolts. You've got to replace the bolts anyway so done. There's a dowel that holds it in place so uh, I'll do those last three which are loose now and then uh, 
We'll take the flywheel off and see what reveals behind. So with the flywheel removed, just a wiggle it a little bit to get it off the, uh, the shaft there. We can see the crunch shaft oil seal. Interesting though, and I saw it online somewhere, somebody else saying there's a plug at the top there. It's like an Allen head plug. And it looks like there's some leaking from around there, and they said when they took theirs off, that was actually the root cause of the problem. It's like it's all leaking down through and then out the bottom of the engine, down the face here. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a clean up, and then try and see if I can work out where the leak's coming from. If that's loose, that might be my problem. But I guess while I'm in here, it's logical to replace that seal. Anyway, let me clean it up and take it from there. So in order to remove the crankshaft seal, you have to very carefully drill a couple of pilot holes in to the old seal, screw in a couple of self-tapping screws, and then lever out using those for leverage. Popped out. Uh, we will lose a little bit of oil, nothing too dramatic. And then uh, to clean that up and pop the new one back in. So in terms of fitting a new seal, I've just cleaned up the, the waste oil on the mating faces. The seal comes with a clear plastic insert and it looks like you have to slide that over the inner section otherwise you'll never get the, the thing to go on um, and I think that just helps you then to ease it over and onto the, the end of the crankshaft see on that on there so I'll just push that flush the paint manual says you're not supposed to lubricate the, the seal in any way and I have got hold of the Land Rover guide as well, and that doesn't mention it either, so I'm putting it in there dry. Okay. So that's the uh, plastic insert that comes with the crankshaft seal. It's got a raised edge here towards the engine side. So you offer that over the top, and it just allows you then to slide the inner edge of the seal against the crankshaft. So that's with the seal in place, flush. Now I'm going to refit the flywheel or drive plate um, and torque those bolts up. They'll be done in a diagonal sequence. So I've been uh, advised online that uh, because the control unit for the gearbox is coded to the car, I need to swap the, uh, the one over from my old box to the new box. Um, so this is held on by three bolts and then you have to untake the, undo the nut here, remove the arm and then that should just unplug and uh, remove from the gearbox and then we just uh, simple swap over. So once you've uh, got the arm off, you just have to very gently prise a little bit underneath with the screwdriver working it from side to side as it comes off and then the control unit just pulls straight up and plugs in as you can see there obviously the control arm remains behind the spigot so I just do the same on the, uh, the gearbox so this is with the replacement gearbox ready to go um, I just marked a couple of the bolt locations just to try and help me locate those once it's on the car. I have to say this is a bit I'm not looking forward to because I think trying to get this aligned is going to be tricky. But, uh, let me get it up under the car and then we'll, we'll take a view from there how best to get it connected. So this part just taking a little bit of time here just to try and make sure I've got it back on my trolley jack securely because obviously I've got to move it part way under and then reattach the crane from above the uh, engine bay so I'm just spending a bit of time making sure that that's 
well supported, not going to drop off. So I'll bring you back once I've uh, managed to get the thing within the engine bay. So here we are with the gearbox resuspended on the engine crane within the engine bay. Um, fortunately, I can use my hanger there to tweak the angle of the engine by raising and lowering this side of the engine slightly. Um, and I've used a spirit level then to try and make sure that with this hanging that the mating faces are reasonably aligned. Uh, what I am finding though with it hung on the crane is it's tilting back down uh, at the back of the car. So I'm going to probably need to prop that up in order to get it to properly align. So I'll have some fun and games I suspect. So I'll have a go at this next. Well I have to say the one thing I've been dreading the most, trying to get the gearbox aligned on my own, um, actually went pretty smoothly. So, uh, happy days with that. Basically a case of juggling it, tweaking the crane, moving in and out, up and down, and then the trolley jack on the rear edge of the gearbox just to help me and get up and down, sort of rotationally, I suppose. Uh, so, I've managed to, in compliance with the Land Rover manual, I've bolted up the, um, the two bolts at the back of the engine and the four bolts underneath um, which are those ones that you see there in the shot uh, we're then supposed to deal with the torque converter next and uh, get those bolts in which could be a bit tricky we'll see how that goes so with regards to bolting up the torque converter which I was quite concerned about trying to get the holes aligned it's pretty yeah, straightforward actually you can reach in here and spin the torque converter and you can see when the holes are lined through there so, uh, happy days, get that done. Right, so I've jumped forward a few stages because uh, obviously reassembly is just a reverse of disassembly. Um, the gearbox is in. Uh, that actually proved, out, proved to be uh, much more straightforward than I thought. Happy days, all the bolts are in and torqued up. Apart from uh, the one that's sort of tucked down the back here, you can't get a torque wrench on it, so I've... Uh, done my best to estimate a torque on that one um, gearbox control link is reattached uh, box re-supported from the hanger um, still work now removed we're back to uh, how it should be in terms of support of engine and gearbox um, and then underneath some pipes to attach, a bit of a clean up, um, and I think it's power transfer unit to pop back on next. We'll next stage of the process. Um, yeah, so going well. One thing I have noticed uh, while underneath the car with the starter motor removed is the state of the protection to the starter motor cable there, which is worn right through. So I need to get hold of some more of this material and replace that. Might be worth keeping an eye on that and your own vehicles. So uh, I've just uh, put the starter motor back on. Much, much easier with the, uh, the subframe out of the way. Um, so that went straightforwardly. I'm now just gonna reconnect the oil feeds to the gearbox from the cooler. Uh, the only thing to remember here is you, there's a couple of O-rings in the end there that you need to replace. So while I've got the subframe off, taking the opportunity to give it a bit of a clean down um, and tackle uh, any significant rust that I found on there. Fortunately, it all appears to be surface rust, which is good. Uh, just really tackled that with a, uh, a band sander uh, and a Dremel, just to get the worst off. Um, I've then uh, washed it down and let it dry and then um, apply some cure rust and some paint. Um, I've taken the steering rack off. As I couldn't get the pipes out of the steering rack, I've actually decided to bite the bullet and uh, order a uh, reconditioned rack, which is, uh, should be due today. So hopefully I can get this back together again. And then the other thing I've been doing is uh, replacing the ball joints with the bolt-on variety. 
due so that I've got the opportunity if I need to drop those away out and, and uh, also dealing with the damage that I did to the uh, old boots. So I've done what I've got the other one to do. So another issue I need to sort, having cut the power steering hoses to get the uh, subframe off. Obviously now I need to um, replace these. So I've got uh, various uh, pipes from various suppliers because none of them had the, uh, the full set. So the first one I'm going to replace is the one that comes off the uh, power steering pump. It comes up and over and then there's a bracket if you loosen the uh, air intake pipe off and there's a uh, bolt down there to undo and uh, I think that then just should uh, lift out because uh, the new pipe comes with a bracket. So I had a slight change of plan with method of attack of getting that pipe off. I actually uh, took off the connection to the power steering pump first. That's a Torx T40. What that allows you to do then is to take the pipe off this clip and then swing it over to the right hand side to get it out of the way and then you can access that. It's a centre my shot there, that um, eight millimetre little bolt down there to get the bracket off. Just makes off a bit easier. And then once you've got that uh, little eight millimetre bolt out, then you just bring the cable up and out. Voila. So that's with the first hose uh, now installed. I rebolt it up at the bottom clip in here, reconnect the bracket here, and then the one in the distance there, and then that drops down just there, ready to connect to the steering rep hose. So uh, next one is the slightly more tricky one I think, which is the one from the reservoir which roots around the back of the expansion tank and I think it's that one down the black one down there I think and it's that nest so in terms of the other pipe I found it easier to remove the reservoir there is a button that you're supposed to be able to push in on the uh, on the pipe to release it, but I just couldn't get it to budge. So I ended up taking uh, this pipe off with the sort of bendy clip um, to get it out of the way. I've then drained enough coolant out of the uh, expansion tank to be able to lift this up and out of the way. Because you can see there, this is a new pipe that I've installed now. Uh, you can see that rooting around down the bottom there. Uh, there's a clip down the side there that goes on to, and another clip down there, a little bit hard to see. Down below, and then when it comes around the side, there's another clip on the side there before it disappears down to the bottom. Um, and it's kind of like a bit of a game of trying to snake it in behind the. Uh, engine restraint so you sort of feed it through get the expansion tank out of the way and feed it down through here sort of twisting it as you go so the reconditioned steering rack has now arrived so I've uh, bolted that on there's a couple of uh, just a couple of bolts from underneath the subframe that come up into these turrets um, and they are torqued up to a 110 newton meters. I've put the track rod ends on um, and I've fitted the new power steering pipe work on the rack as well and I've refitted the, the rubber boot that just sort of locks on with like a spigot if you like you push down and twist um, so I think we'll soon be ready to slide that under the car and get that started in terms of bolting it up. Now 
So I didn't bother to film the subframe uh, reinstall. Um, I think all I'd say about that is I tried to fit the uh, the wishbone ball joints first into the hubs. Managed to get the two rear bolts in, and then I was just fighting against myself trying to get the front ones in. Um, and in the end, uh, I had to drop the ball joints back out again, and then it was pretty straightforward. Um, managed to get all four bolts started, and then just gradually pinched them up until uh, it was in the subframe was in contact with the uh, the bodywork. Um, the monster with those bolts is though it's a it's a 140 initial torque and then a 240 degrees angular torque. Um, and I ended up with a 600 mil breaker bar and a metre long scaffold tube on the end of that to try and get that 240 degrees of turn because it's at the stretch bolts um, and that was a real struggle it was a hell of a lot of force needed to um, to get those bolts to turn and to uh, and to stretch so with the subframe back on um, which is really then a case of rebuilding rest of car so bumper back on um, uh, wheel arch liners etc um, I've now been running the car for about a week um, the new gearbox is working fine the only issues I had was that when I was fitting the steering rack I managed to turn the steering wheel through 360 degrees uh, before reattaching during that process trying to get things lined up um, and then I end up with lots of warning lights on the dash when I started to back up um, because uh, the car was confused by uh, thinking the wheels were 360 degrees turned to the left. So uh, I had to re uh, undo the, uh, uh, the knuckle joint and uh, spin the wheel back through 360 degrees while the engine's running. It's no good doing that without, because obviously the car won't register the turn otherwise. Um, Rebolted that up and then all the, uh, all the lights cleared. So um, that's all the warning lights uh, off the dash now. Uh, the gearbox has been running nicely. I just checked the oil this morning, a week after, um, or rechecked the oil um, a week after driving it round, and that's all good. Um, topped up the power steering, um, but no leaks from any of the hoses, so that's also good. Um, and then the other good news is that having done the um, uh, the rear uh, crankshaft seal um, for the first time ever, um, I've not got any. Uh, oil leaks from underneath the car, which is uh, which is phenomenal. Although obviously uh, losing that rust protection, but uh, happy to live with that. Um, so yeah, so the only thing I'm going to do now is uh, I found there's a there's a software reset or recalibration for the gearbox that should have been done uh, quite a few years ago um, through Land Rover. Uh, there's no record of my car having had that done. So I've got it booked in to do that recalibration, uh, just to see whether or not that's going to help the uh, the noises that I'm experiencing. Uh, so lessons learned: uh, uh, it is possible on a driveway to swap an auto gearbox out. Uh, you will need um, uh, an engine hoist, though, uh, and you could do with a decent trolley jack and some method of uh, helping to secure the the gearbox on that trolley jack. Um, uh, so yeah, so I hope that's um, hope that's useful, um, and uh, good luck if you try it yourself. Okay.